So a very popular Skyrim fan theory is that the last Dragonborn, the protagonist of the game Skyrim, could become the next Emperor. And it is a theory that I definitely support. I definitely believe that he could become the Emperor of a Cyrodelic Empire. But notice that I said a Cyrodelic Empire and not the Septim Empire. I'll explain why later in this video. Because in this video, I will be explaining how the last Dragonborn could possibly become the next Emperor. So the way that the Dragonborn could become Emperor depends on the assassination of Titus Mead II. You see, the way that Bethesda's canon works is that the only canon thing that the protagonist themselves does is complete the main questline, as well as the main questlines of the DLC. But other questlines, including those of the factions, it is canon that the events that happened in that questline occur. But what isn't canon is if whether or not the protagonist is responsible. This is to prevent conflict between canon and what the player decides to do in the game. So in this instance, the assassination of Titus Mead by the Dark Brotherhood whilst he is visiting Skyrim is canon. But whether or not this was done by the last Dragonborn, or simply by another assassin, is really up to the player. But despite whether or not it was the Dragonborn, or just another member of the Brotherhood, it will be a set-in-stone part of Elder Scrolls lore that Titus Mead is assassinated during the time the game Skyrim takes place. So after the assassination happens, there is a question that we need to answer. Has Titus Mead already planned for a successor? Because in Skyrim, we have absolutely no idea if whether or not Titus Mead has a successor. But perhaps it doesn't even matter if whether or not he has a successor planned. Because as we know, Titus Mead II had a very unsuccessful reign. He lost the Great War, had to sign a peace treaty which had terms that made the public very unhappy. Including the one where he had to deny Talos's godship. Which would be one of the many factors that would start another war the Skyrim Civil War, not to mention all the territory that the Empire lost under the rule of the Mede Dynasty. Somerset Isle, or Eleanor, succeeded to form the Aldermary Dominion. Valenwood and elsewhere succeeded to join the Aldermary Dominion. Argonia, or the Black Marsh, and Hammerfell succeeded from the Empire after the Great War due to disagreements with the terms of the White Gold Concordat. Much of Morrowind was annexed by the Black Marsh during the Argonian invasions, as well as submerged in ash from the Red Mountain eruption, and the rest of Morrowind that had not been annexed by Argonia or destroyed by the eruption gained independence from the Empire. The only three provinces that the Empire has control over now is the capital province of Cyrodiil, High Rock, and legally all of Skyrim, but in reality only half of it as the province is currently in a civil war, also due to disagreements with the White Gold Concordat. So you may be wondering what my point is with all of this. The way that the Dragonborn could become Emperor is via another interregnum war. If Titus Mead dies without any successor, then another interregnum war could start. Or even if Titus Mead dies with an heir, the people might be so unhappy with how the Mede dynasty ran the Empire that they do not want another Mede Emperor, thus starting an interregnum war slash civil war across the Empire. And if there is another interregnum war, the Dragonborn could easily get the support needed to win the war and to claim the throne. If the people learned that a Dragonborn was coming to take the Imperial throne, thousands would flock to his cause. But now that I've explained how the last Dragonborn could become Emperor, there are two problems that I need to quickly address. The first one is his very title, The Last Dragonborn. Because, according to prophecy, The Last Dragonborn would most likely be The Last Dragonborn. If The Last Dragonborn was to create a new dynasty of rulers, they would possibly not be Dragonborn Emperors or Empresses. Because, according to prophecy, the world will no longer need a Dragonborn after Alduin is defeated. And you can't say that they're going to be Dragonborn because they're descendants of Dragonborn. Because despite popular belief, being a Dragonborn is not a matter of biological inheritance. 
For one to be dragonborn, he or she must be chosen to be dragonborn by Agatosh himself. So the last dragonborn could create a new dynasty of emperors, and a fourth empire, but they would possibly not be dragonborn emperors or empresses. Or another possibility is that the prophecy is wrong, and they do turn out to be dragonborns. We simply do not know. And the second thing is, like I said, creating a fourth empire. At the start of the video, I kinda hinted that the dragonborn couldn't be emperor of the third empire. And that's because it could cause conflict with the Skyrim Civil War questline. If the dragonborn were to side with the empire in the Civil War, then that would still make sense. But if he were to side with the Stormcloaks in the Civil War, then he would become an enemy of the Empire, and so it wouldn't make sense for him to become the Emperor. But if the Third Empire were to collapse, and an interregnum war were to start, which would lead to the foundation of the Fourth Empire, which personally I think will actually happen, then that would make sense, because it wouldn't matter who the Dragonborn sided with in the Civil War, because that Empire would have collapsed and been replaced anyway. So if the last Dragonborn were to become Emperor, it would make more sense if it were that of a new Empire the Fourth Empire. So that is how I believe the last Dragonborn could become Emperor. What do you guys think? Could the last Dragonborn become Emperor? And if so, how could he? I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in the next one.